Morning, geometry students, and happy Monday. I hope that you had a great weekend, and I hope you're ready to um, learn a little bit more about circles. Today, I'm going to be talking to you about 10.3, um, which is using chords. I have to look that up again. Um, as a quick review, remember a chord is any segment that has its endpoints on the circle, right? If it goes through the center, that's a very special chord. It's a, that's right, diameter. If it doesn't go through, like this one, we just call that a chord, right? I mean, they're both chords, but that one's not as special. If it's a diameter, it divides the circle into two equal parts, right? Remember, we call that a semicircle. That means exactly one half of a circle. If it's not, then we've got a larger arc and a smaller arc. Remember, we call the larger one a major arc, and the smaller one, this guy down here, is the minor arc. Again, this is, should be review, but I just want to make sure that we're all on the same page with those. All right, so we've got a few note cards. Note card number one coming at you right here, the congruent corresponding chords theorem. So again, take a second to write this down, pause it if you need to, so that you have that on a note card. All right, so I'm going to talk a little bit about it, assuming you have that written down. Notice it is a biconditional, if and only if, right? So, um we can say these two co these two arcs, arc AB and arc CD, are congruent if we know that these two chords are congruent. Or we could go backwards and say, if we know that these two arcs are congruent, then these chords have to be congruent. Also notice it said in the same circle or in congruent circles, right? So it can go with two circles that are congruent, we could also make the same conclusions. All right, note card number two. Again, write this down, pause it if you need to. I'm not going to worry about the proof. <coughs> All right, I'm assuming you have that written down. So <coughs> we're talking about the diameter being perpendicular to the chord. If we know that, then we know that the diameter bisects the chord. So um, segment FH is congruent to segment HD and it bisects the arc, so that arc um, GD is congruent to arc GF, right? And that's only if the diameter is perpendicular to the chord. So we have to have a diameter, and then it has to be perpendicular to the chord. All right, and then the last note card, again, write it down. All right, so if a chord is a perpendicular bisector of another chord, then this guy here is a diameter, right? And again, don't worry about the proof. Sorry, forgot to scratch that off. All right, so perpendicular bisector. Remember, that's perpendicular and it bisects it, right? Um, I know that a lot of times we write these as biconditionals, by the way, but this one I want you to write both of these because... It just works better that way. All right, so perpendicular bisector. Perpendicular cuts into two equal parts, right? If it does that, then we know that this is a diameter. All right, so we're going to apply these in a few problems here. So take a second, look at this. It'd be awesome if you paused it and see if you could figure out the answer before I talk. All right, so we know that we've got congruent circles because that's what this says. Circle P is congruent to circle Q. I know that segment FG is congruent to segment JK. They're also marked in the picture. And I know the measure of arc JK is 80 degrees. So the, the measure of arc FG has to be the same. So the measure of arc FG is... 80 degrees, right? That's that first note card we wrote today. All right, we're going to look at this one. It gets a little bit more complex. All right, so what do we know on our picture? 
Well, we know that JL is a diameter. We know this because it goes through the center. We also know that it's perpendicular. So according to our second note card, we know that since this is a diameter and it's perpendicular to this chord, that it bisects the chord, right? So that means that H to M has to be the same as, or H to N, excuse me, has to be the same as N to K. Well, N to K is 7, so H to N has to be 7, so H K is 14, right? Now, arc H K. Well, we know that since this is a diameter and it's perpendicular to this chord, that it bisects this arc. Or in other words, the measure of HJ is or is equal to the measure of JK. So I can say 11x equals 70 plus x, right? So now we just do some algebra to solve for x. Subtract an x from both sides. That gives us 10x equals 70. Divide by 10 and x equals 7, right? So 11 times 7, 77. 70 plus 7, 77. So if I want to find the measure of arc HK, that would be 77 plus 77, which is 154. All right, let's do another sample problem. So it says, 1 and 2 use the diagram of circle D. So number 1, it says the measure of arc AB is 110 degrees. What's the measure of arc BC? Well, notice a segment AB is congruent to segment BC because they're both 9. So that means that the measure of arc AB has to be the same as measure of arc BC. So it's 110 degrees. All right, in number two, we're going to forget the, what we did for number one. We're going to redo this, and it says AC is 150 degrees, right? So if I think of this as 150 degrees, I've got these two arcs to get to my whole circle. The measure of a whole circle is what? Oh, 360. So 150 plus something plus something has to equal 360. But what do I know about these two arcs? they are the same, so I can put x and x, right? Or 150 plus 2x equals 360, right? So I subtract 150 from both sides, and I get 2x equals 210, right? Divide by 2, x equals 105. So the measure of AB is 105 degrees. All right, so let's look at this next picture. All right, so we look at this. I know that BD is a diameter because it goes through the center, and I know that this is perpendicular, right? So CE is double this because CF has to be congruent to FE, so FE is 5, so CE is 10. And the measure of arc CE, again, since this is a diameter and it's perpendicular, I know that it's bisected it, or 9x equals 80 minus x. I add x to both sides. I get 10x equals 80, divide by 10, and x equals 8, right? 9 times 8, 72, or 80 minus 8. 72, right? So CE is 72 times 2, or 144 degrees. All right, one more note card. I know I said previously last note card. I apologize. We really have, this is the last one, the equidistant chords theorem. So again, write it down. It is a biconditional. So we say in the same circle or in congruent circle, two chords are congruent if and only if they are equidistant from the center. Remember, equidistant means the same distance. Or in other words, EF has to equal EG, right? So if I know that the two chords are congruent, I know that they are the same distance from the center. Or if I know they're the same distance from the center, those two chords are congruent. So we'll work some problems using that one. So 
Love this problem. So QR equals ST equals 16. So that equals that, which is 16, right? So what that tells us is that these two chords are congruent, right? In the previous note card, remember that meant that they are equidistant. Or in other words, from C to U has to equal from C to V, right? So we can write that. 2x equals 5x minus 9, right? So I'm going to subtract 2x from both sides, giving me 0 equals 3x minus 9. I add 9. 9 equals 3x. Divide by 3. Divide by 3. x equals 3, right? So 2 times 3 is 6, and 5 times 3 is 15 minus 9 is ooh, 6, which we should not be surprised by, right? Um, I'm not going to write that in there because I don't have enough room. All right, now, something else that's important to note, again, notice WX is the diameter. How do I know this? It goes through the center, and it's perpendicular to these. So what does that tell us? Right, it divides QR or ST into two congruent parts, meaning that each of these are eight, because remember the whole thing was um, 16, right? Now, it's asking us to find the radius of circle C. Now I can finally start to think about that. If I want the radius, I could draw it anywhere, but I'm gonna specifically draw that radius right here. Notice I'm connecting C to Q, right? If you look at CQU is a right triangle, and I know two sides of the right triangle, so I'm going to draw that down here, pulling it out, where this is um, U, this is C, and this is Q, right? And I know that CU is 6, and UQ is 8, right? So if this is the radius, I'm going to put that R, I've got a right triangle, Pythagorean theorem, 6 squared plus 8 squared equals R squared. Again, I know R is the longest side, it's the hypotenuse because it's opposite the right angle. So 36 plus 64 equals R squared, 100 equals R squared, I take the square root, and R equals 10. So the radius of this circle is 10. All right, so let's walk back through that problem again because it was fairly involved. This will be the hardest problem on your homework. So we knew two chords that were congruent. Because of that, we know that they are equidistant. CV equals CU. So we wrote 2x equals 5x minus 9. Did the algebra to solve for x? That gives us how far this bit is, right? Also, these two chords are congruent um, and they're perpendicular, so I know that I can fill in each of those, right? So SV is also 8 and VT would also be 8, by the way. Then I can draw a radius in that forms a right triangle, just like this. And then Pythagorean theorem, and I can solve. So here is another one. Go ahead and copy that down. See if you can find the answer um, just go ahead and pause this video, see if you can work it out and figure some things out, and then um, I'm going to work through it, and we'll see if we can come up with the same answer. All right, so I hope you paused. I hope you're back with an answer. So same thing. We know that this is the diameter. We know that these two chords are congruent. We know that it's perpendicular here, so we know that it's going to um, bisect these two chords, right? So but I'm going to start knowing that they're equidistant, so I'm going to know that 3x equals 7x minus 12. So solving again, doing some more algebra. While I'm doing this, you may be wondering um, why I didn't just subtract 7x. Um, I could have, but I much prefer 
to have my answers or just deal with positive numbers. But you could have negatives and then when you divide, you'd still get the same answer. Um, so that's cool. All right, so I know that my x is three, so I know that the distance NP is nine, right? I know that JK is 24, so PK has to equal 12, right? So then, drawing in my radius R there, I've got this right triangle. I'm gonna draw it more like we see it on this one. Um, so this is N, this is K, and this is P, and NP is nine, PK is 12, and NK is my radius, right? And this is the right angle, so nine squared plus 12 squared equals R squared, right? Doing the math, 81 plus 144 equals R squared. Um, get out my calculator. 81 plus 144, 225. So to figure out R, we do the square root. And the square root of 225 is, that's right, 15. So the radius of the circle is 15. All right, awesome. Thanks for joining me. I have an assignment posted for this in Big Ideas Math, so I would love for you to go on there and complete that. As always, if you have questions, concerns, please, please, please get a hold of me right away. Thanks so much, and I will see you guys on Wednesday.